Before we even talk about whether FANG even exists as a trading acronym anymore, let, let's talk about whether Uber, Lyft, uh, Pinterest, do these stocks kind of have the same format that the original FANG had? Well, the interesting thing about some of these names, you know, particularly Pinterest, which is going to compete in the digital advertising space, is that, uh, yeah, they might be good opportunities, but the IPO valuation ranges that I'm uh, hearing about, I think, are egregious. Egregiously high? They have a situation high? with Pinterest, for example, rumored to uh, IPO with a $12 billion valuation. And if you were to give it the price-to-sales ratio of Facebook, which is a company that it probably aspires to be, not in the near term, but in the long term, that would be an IPO that really should be $8 billion or less. Hmm. Now, with Uber and Lyft, interesting. I'd like to see more from the prospectuses, but these, these companies may have a lot of revenue runway, but we're also companies that are hugely loss-making and probably be loss-making and cash flow burning for some time. So where do you think numbers like $12 billion come up? I mean, you, you can have all kinds of whisper numbers, but do you think that's actually where it prices or do you think it gets taken down well before that? I think it should be taken down. I've heard Uber, for example, craziness to think that uh, that IPO will uh, go for $120 billion. And if it does, it should be immediately shorted. The last round for Uber was a $70 billion valuation. That's more reasonable, but I still think it's high. Uh, the last round for Lyft was about a $15 billion valuation. Again, it should be trading at a discount. It'll be interesting to see Lyft probably goes first in the IPO market. How is that received for the follow-on with Uber? Paul, it's, it's Rich Bernstein. You and I go back a million years. Uh, I remember when we were both at Merrill, I think we had this exact same discussion. It was probably BC back then. But um, uh, tech is, very, is always very cyclical. That's always been my contention, and, and that's what we were discussing a long time ago. If profitability is peaking out here in the United States, and if this begins to roll over, are we seeing these tech companies come to market because the, the VCs, the shareholders, I think, realize that the next 12 to 18 months, profitability may be more cyclical than people think, and they're just trying to exit? Is this really a, a great opportunity for a public equity person to be buying these companies? Hey, Rich, you know, it's uh, wonderful to be back with you. We had these conversations, I believe, back in the late 90s, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Hopefully being the most uh, sober of the tech investors at that time. I think you're absolutely right. I've always thought that at least on a cyclical basis, you know, the uh, growth rate for these companies should be GDP plus a couple hundred basis points because right. IT spending should be a little bit higher. Right, exactly. And so when I see some of these valuations, it reminds me of the uh, bad old days, and I still have lashes on my back from that environment, <laughs> where some of these companies are coming at ridiculous valuations, and although they're higher quality than some of the firms that were coming in 1999, 2000, sure. 2001, the valuations are still unsettling to me. Right. Paul, do you think that these Stocks could, do, I mean, do you think the IPOs will be taken down effectively, or do you think that this is a situation where if you're a retail buyer on the IPO that you're going to be left holding the bag? Oh, man, I'm really worried. Take a look at uh, about two years ago we had Snap, and that is probably the closest thing that we'll have to Pinterest, right? I remember at the time it was supposed to be a Facebook killer. That stock had a huge run from its IPO price, and it got up into the 20s, and then it went to 4 you know, down 80 percent. And I think that Snap is a horribly managed company. Pinterest, I don't know enough about it. Hopefully it's better. But please, 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 the retail investor should probably, particularly if it's a frothy IPO, there is no reason to buy on the IPO or even the day or two after. Let's see how it settles. And yeah. I think it could go way down and it might be attractive at some point, but not in the first 24, 48 hours. Pinterest, I saw it being described as a an image catalog or image searching company, which kind of surprised me because I always thought of it as kind of like a style company. But I guess we, should we be thinking of it as the technology underneath it and not what it's effectively I think we should. And because uh, the key thing to look at all these companies is where they get their money. And of course, they're going to be trying to vie for that digital advertising budget. And if you take a look at eMarketer's predictions, they say even years from now, Pinterest is going to have 1% of the share. And right now, you still have an oligopoly with Facebook and Google with about 60% of the share. And you know who's going to be a very tough number three because it's the most ruthless company on planet Earth is Amazon. 
So those three companies will garner the share. And then what happens with Twitter and Snap and Pinterest? I'm not convinced that uh, they're going to be long-term players. Paul, can I, can I change the, the topic slightly here and just, it, it's almost like tech stocks are, are not tech stocks anymore, right? If you think about Lyft and Uber, they're, they're transportation, consumer cyclical stocks, are they really technology stocks. Is there anything that you're really interested in in traditional technology? You know, I am a weird guy because I am a value tech guy. You know, I try to be right. the uh, tech contrarian. And there is a company that everybody hates, that I love, not because it's a good company, it's actually a sad company, but it is uh, grossly undervalued, and that's CenturyLink. Hmm. CTL, hmm. stocks trading at about 13, a uh, solid at least dollar in earnings per share, growing about 5 or 6% per year. Last week it got crushed because they took their unsustainable dividend payout from $2.16 per share per year down to a buck. Right. So it still yields 8% in the 2% market. I think this stock has 5% downside, and over the next couple of years, 50% upside. <laughs> so I like all of the fangs. I watch all these stocks, but I need to see value, and that is about the only compelling value I see right now. <laughs> these stocks going public, Uber, Lyft, Pinterest, does that take away from fang, or is there enough for everybody? Or is it the same investors who are buying all these shares? You know, that is a very interesting question. I think that if you end up after reading the prospectus and maybe attending the roadshow for these companies, I think what you may do is take some market share out of your portfolio for some of the fangs and go into those names. Because you have the people that seem to be interested and they may think that these are the new growth companies, but I don't think so.